Seriously, just just a, I love the normalness. The, Thank you, buddy. I, and I like that he likes that we're normal too. Yes. So we appreciate Thank you, that. Jesus, amen. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yeah, amen. Man, normal is good. I, I, the, the weird. I don't know where that people think that's spiritual. That's not spiritual. That's just weird. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So look at how cool you came out on Tuesday night, man. This is wonderful. I know you're super busy and your lives are busy, but you're in church. Yeah. I mean, somebody must have been praying for all of us. Isn't that right? Come on. We could have been lost as a goose in a snowstorm, and we're in church on Tuesday night hearing the word, uh, getting our lives set up for what we're called to do right before he returns. Won't that be fun when we're raptured? People will ask you, now, what were you doing the last year or two before we were raptured? Uh, you know, some people are going, well, I was busy doing this, busy doing this. Go, I was in church all the time obeying God. Ooh, come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not that you would tout that, but that is pretty neat. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You probably have a t-shirt. I was in church all the time or whatever. Amen. <laughs> So, man, last night we got into a little bit about authority. There's a bunch more we could get into. I'll do a couple minutes of review. But then the service before that, I believe, was the rapture of the church. How fun is that going to be? Rapture will be caught up. How neat to get a brand new body, never gain weight again, never get tired again. Come on. How cool is that? Amen. And remember, the rapture is a beginning, not an ending. And then the service before that, we got into the signs of the coming of the Lord. I'm going to shoot my end of days update here tonight right after we're finished. And I was looking today, man, several things happened today that I was like, oh, my Lord. One thing was, was that they found a new river going from Jerusalem east to the Dead Sea. They, it was un, undiscovered, and uh, the rabbis were going crazy. And then this week, uh, there's 49 leaders from all over the world that are going to Israel for the Holocaust Forum. And the rabbi said, that's, that's the prophecy in Isaiah, four, I mean, Psalms 48 coming to pass. So you got something every single week coming to pass that the rabbis are going like, oh, wow, the, the Messiah is about to come. Praise the Lord. Well, for them, they think it's his first coming. We know it's the second coming. Amen. My Jewish buddies that I try to get saved, I hammer them as hard as I can. They say they're going to ask Jesus, Lord, have you been here before? And it's like, he's going to go, yes, I was here and died for you, and I just came back. So how privileged are we to find out who we are in Christ? Just the things you're, you're saying. Something I heard uh, Brother Hagen say this last uh, year on tape, which maybe about four or five years ago, which I'm a real freak about hearing Kenneth Hagen. This is something that's going to bless you. You know, we always thought Brother Hagen got like uh, all those visions. Jesus appeared to him in 1950, and then the next time about demons, different things. Talked to him for like three hours one time. We all thought he, that happened to him because he was a prophet. He said that happened to him because he confessed that verse that Pastor Nate just had to confess. There was a summer where he confessed that thousands of times, and it gave God legal right so that the eyes of his understanding would be enlightened. He would know what the hope of his calling is. So we thought it was the prophet's ministry. No, it was speaking the word. You can't help but get changed by speaking the word like that. Ooh, come on. My mother made me confess that every day as a kid. She'd go, you do your confessions already? Yeah, yeah, I've done them. I did the same thing to my daughter. She couldn't go to bed without confessing the word because she's framing her future. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want your future to be good, speak the word. Yes. Well, that went over real good. Good night, everybody. Praise the Lord. Start the car. I'll be right there. Come on. Now, let's pray, and we'll get right into the word tonight because I know he's going to strengthen you. He's going to bless you. He'll encourage you because he loves you. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for this wild bunch that came out on Tuesday night, Lord. We're, we're hungry. You said if we would hunger and thirst, we would be filled. So you're, you're commissioned to watch over your word to perform it. So we thank you for an infilling tonight of strength, of grace, of power, of more of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask you to unveil to us tonight different facets of our King. L let us see him in different lights tonight, Lord. Uh, the amazingness that he overcame death, hell, and the grave. And once again, we, we make proclamation uh, like it's Easter, he's alive and well, raised from the dead. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for this season uh, of great grace before the rapture of the church. Souls being swept into the kingdom. We thank you for an articulation of our duties as healing technicians, as ministers for Jesus, as the hand of the Lord in the earth. Help us. Help us cooperate with you more, Father. We thank you for that. We thank you for blessing every household, every family. Thank you their jobs are blessed, their kids are blessed, their households are blessed. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Go to the first epistle of John. I want to give you about two minutes of review from last night. A couple things I've, I didn't get into. The Lord reminded me of this uh, when I got there on the front row. This is something I really love about authorization. We have a tendency when we're getting ready to pray for someone, we have a tendency to think, did we pray enough today? Am I holy enough? Did I, did I do doing everything all right? When you're praying for somebody, it's not about you. It's about him. 
We've made it about us. Am I ready to pray for someone? Am I anointed enough? It's not about you. It's about whose who's authority you're carrying. And we're carrying Jesus' authority. I didn't get into it last night, but the Lord operated under old covenant authority while he walked on the earth. There was enough, uh, there was enough power in Adam's covenant to get people set free. Remember in Luke 13, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 13 years, she should be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. There was enough power in Abraham's covenant to get that woman healed. And then the same thing with uh, Jesus operated in Adam's authority, operated in Abraham's authority, then he operated in David's authority. Remember, uh, blind Bartimaeus came up to Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Don't you love this? He, wa- he walks like this. He goes, son of David, have mercy on me. And the Lord goes, what would you have me to do? Hello, he's blind. I mean, it's like, hello, hello. And, but no, the Lord was trying to find out if he knew what he was saying when he said, son of David. There was enough authority in David's covenant to give him his sight. But see, tonight, you don't operate in Adam's authority. You don't operate in David's authority. You don't operate in Abraham's authority. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, come on. And he quoted it, man. Jesus is raised from the dead. So you've got a whole new level of authorization to be here in his stead. So it's, it's actually not fair. We have so much excessive power. I have a sticker I used to make on my table called Stout Gospel, Power to Spare. You got more than enough. Amen. So grab your Bibles. Did I tell you where to go? Did I, I did tell you, right? The Epistle of John. Did I tell you the Epistle of John? I don't, I hope I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't pr- give you the right place there. We'll get there. I've had so much fun with your pastors and the staff and, and you guys coming so hungry. And uh, like, like Pastor Nate said, just being normal is just such a breath of fresh air. And... Uh, it's just, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Grab your Bibles there and go to the Epistle of John. All right, last night was authorization. Let's get into some more tonight that makes it automatic for us to operate in the power of God, okay? We did talk about all the signs Sunday morning, but look at the Epistle of John, chapter 2. Look at verse 6. It's page 296 if you got a Bible like mine. And we'll start here with verse 6. He said, he that says that he abides in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. He said, if, if you say he's in you, it will change your walk. Okay? I mean, the Bible says in John 14 that we do the works that he did. And that, that word works there, the same works as the word parallel. That you could walk beside Jesus and people couldn't tell your works from his works. Because here he says, if you say he's in you, it'll change the way you walk. I was preaching in Waco, Texas. There was a woman that was uh, on her deathbed in the hospital. The little, little daughter came to me one of the nights I was preaching. She said, hey, my mom's had open heart surgery. Her, she has almost no blood pressure. They say she's going to die. Will you pray for her? I said, sure, give me your jacket. I laid hands on her jacket because the Bible says God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul. Not Paul, God did it. Laid hands on that jacket. I said, take it to her and put it on her in the hospital. They took it to her in the intensive care unit. She said, when we set the jacket on her, all her vitals started coming up. Her blood pressure went up. Her heart rate went up. The nurse said, whatever you do, go get more jackets. Well, it's not the jackets. It's what's in the jacket. And here he said, if it's in you, it changes the way you walk. I remember in Newport, Rhode Island one time, uh, 1988 or 89, I had a word of knowledge that a woman had a cyst on her ovary. This man came walking down. Now, this is way before transgender stuff. This guy comes walking down, and I said, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. You, it, it, uh, uh, ovaries are in a woman. And this guy goes, I used to be a woman. I was like, oh, my God. Okie dokie, here we go. <laughs> so I prayed for her. She got healed of her cyst, went back to the doctor, and sent me the t- healing report, and I told the lady in the office, don't lose that report. You've got a woman that's had had a, a, a gender change, and still Jesus heals her, yeah. him, or whatever he is. I don't know. It. <laughs> Healed it. So we, we just so underestimate how powerful the Lord is. Amen? He's just good. Extreme good. And he says, if you say he's in you, it changes the way you walk. If I'm not walking like him, I need to look at what I've been thinking about and what's in me. Do I have religion in me? Do I have tradition in me? Or do I have Jesus in me? So let's go back and look at this. Go back to Isaiah. Grab your Bibles there. We'll go through a lot of verses. Uh, Go to Isaiah chapter 10, and it's a real popular verse, but let's look at it in a little bit different light tonight. Isaiah 10. This has been on the Holy Hit Parade for a while, but in the top 10 anyway. Very popular verse, but I want to give you a different slant on it here tonight, okay? Look at Isaiah 10. Look at verse number 27. Very familiar verse, but I want, to, I want to open it up a little bit. Isaiah 10, verse 27. It'll come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, man, we use that, you know, the burden-removing, yoke-destroying anointing, and that's true. That's what it is. 
And we quote that all the time. But really, if you want to be scriptural, Isaiah 11 talks about the millennium. He's talking about removing the burden of the Antichrist on the, on the shoulder of Israel. He said, I'll remove that burden from you. And if you look at the next chapter, he talks about the millennial reign of Christ. So we talk about it as being a healing anointing, but really it's a kingdom setting up anointing. See, it doesn't no limitation. And Jesus said, some of you won't taste death until you see the kingdom coming in glory. He took him up on that mountain, and all of a sudden his skin began to radiate. His hair began to be white as snow. His skin couldn't contain that radiation. It's a kingdom that knows no equal. It knows no defeat. It's not just a healing anointing. It's a dominion anointing. Wow. We're going to see it face to face here pretty soon. <clears throat> so with this, let's go over to Thessalonians and let's look at the New Testament version of this. Because I, I want you to think about this for a minute because I'm getting closer to what I'm going to preach on here for a little bit. Go to 2 Thessalonians. If you got your Bible there, it's good to go to your scripture. Remember, clean Bible, uh, dirty Christian, dirty Bible, clean Christian. Look at your neighbor's Bible, see if it's spotless. Come on now, that's not good. <laughs> Is everybody with me tonight? Yes, sir. You're really, really glad you're here. Okay, come on, let's let's get it. Let's get look at Second Thessalonians and let's look at the New Testament version of what we just got there in Isaiah. Because he said, if you say he's in you, it changes you. Okay, let's look here at Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. He said, "Now uh, we beseech you or beg you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the second coming." And by our gathering together unto him, that's the rapture, that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That's the word departure, that Enoch departed before the flood came. And people think of this as a departure from the faith. Paul was writing this because they thought they were in the tribulation. Nero was killing so many Christians, they thought, well, we have to be in the trib. Paul said, don't worry, he he can't be revealed until you depart. The church has to depart because you can't have the Christ and the Antichrist here at the same time. Because the Bible calls you Christ, calls you the body of Christ. So then he goes on a little further and gets more detail in this because I'm getting closer to the New Testament version of where we were there in Isaiah. Look what he says here. Hang with me. Verse 7. Let's look at it. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Talking about the Antichrist. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's the New Testament version of Isaiah 10, 27. See, he's going to obliterate him with the brightness of his coming. Now hang with me. The devil doesn't get any more powerful than when he enters into a man. That'll be the height of his power. For three and a half years, he's going to enter into a man. And the Bible calls that the great tribulation. Calls it the, we were talking about it today, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. Jesus quotes it. Here, Satan enters into a man, finally has some authority, and all Jesus has to do is show up. He's obliterated with the brightness of his coming. Every room you walk into, that's what you carry. You have this treasure in earthen vessels. Come on, Paul talked about it in 2 Corinthians. He said Moses, when he went up on the mountain, (laughs) he began to radiate so much they had to put a lampshade over him. Could you imagine going and talk to the Lord? Come out and eat, you're just too bright. Could you imagine having to put goggles on to talk to Moses? Moses comes out, they put a lampshade on him. He goes back in, takes the lampshade off. So he's radiating with the glory of God. And Paul said that was no glory. That was no glory in relation to what you have in Christ. What you have in Christ far exceeds Moses radiating to the point they had to put a blanket on him. So see, this is what you carry. It's not a healing anointing. It's not a miracle anointing. It's a kingdom setting up anointing. Every room you walk in. Jesus shows up, and whatever Satan has, the best he has to offer is obliterated with the brightness of his coming. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. I was preaching in, in Germany, had two ladies healed of AIDS in the same service. I mean, he, 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 his presence is overwhelming. Let two ladies healed of AIDS. They said, well, there's no, no hope for you. No, there is two hope for you. You could be here tonight. You could have something weird. They tell you you got something that's just odd or strange. There's nothing that you can do to top what Jesus did. Mm, 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 mm. All right, let's look at a little bit more. Grab your Bibles there. Go over to Romans. Go to Romans 13 because we're getting closer to what I'm going to preach on. It just takes me a little bit of time to get there because I want to get to something really, really neat here in a second. Go to Romans. If you got your Bibles there, let's roam through Romans for a minute. You know what I like about Romans 13 
is it's right after Romans 12. <laughs> I can actually count. So see, it's a, But what happens in Romans 12, he tells you something tangibly and physically you can do to enhance the part of you where the grace of God dwells. You can put your flesh under, give up your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto, unto you, the Lord, which is your reasonable service. So he tells you to tell your flesh to be quiet. Now hang with me, because most people aren't trying to murder anybody. Most people aren't trying to commit adultery, but they'll let little things in their flesh keep them from having their graces come forward. And really, we talked about it today, and I can't believe I'm going to say it tonight, because I've got a lot more I want to preach on. Uh, Israel missed their destiny because of irritability. Not murder, not adultery, irritability, complaining. So that's why once you get into a coffin, I've never seen someone in a coffin complain about the suit they're wearing. You ever been to a funeral? They go, I can't believe what they put me in. This is weird. No, no, no. Once you're in, <laughs> you don't complain anymore. You, you give up your body's a living sacrifice. So he's talking about here, you want the hidden graces in your life, the unseen parts of you where those graces are, put your flesh under. Okay, when I say put your flesh under, just don't let your flesh rule you. Well, that went over real good, but anyway, we're going to get somewhere. Go to Romans 13. We're almost there. You got your Bibles there? Look at Romans 13. Watch what he says here. Romans 13, verse 10. Love works no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of our sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. You could preach that so hard, I should start screaming right now. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, not in drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now here, if you, can, if you can have a mindset to make no provision for the flesh, turn it around and have a mindset of making provision for the spirit. I've done all this to get to this point here in a minute. I'm going to give you some points. What can you do to make provision? What can you do to make a doorway? What can you do to make it automatic where the Holy Ghost begins to manifest the gifts of the Spirit without you trying? Because that's what we want. All making provision means you're thinking ahead. You know, like, right, I haven't got to go duck hunting much the last couple of years. I used to go quite a bit in the wintertime. And, man, I, I just haven't got to go because I was busy. My, one of my buddies that I go with, he's busy. But you know what? I got the gear, man. I got, I got an oilcloth shooting jacket, you know, from Ralph Lauren. I've got a Verona tw- over and under 12 gauge. I got a Browning. I got a Remington. I got a 45. I got a 9 millimeter. I got, a, I got a 40 cal. In other words, I got so much ammo that moving from the last house I moved to, I thought, well, how am I going to haul all this ammo? In other words, if a hunt broke out, I got guns here, guns here, guns here, guns here, boom, 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 I'm I'm ready. But if a revival broke out, have I made provision for the Spirit? See, we, we, we want to cooperate with God. He said, don't be misinformed about the nine different manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Two things he said, don't be misinformed about, the coming of the Lord and the gifts of the Spirit. Why? Right before the coming of the Lord, the church will have an outflow of mentality. How to get the power through you not just to you. You've figured out how to get it to you. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You'll ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Not your friend, not your neighbor. That's for you. That's what basic faith is for, for you primarily. But this whole season is about how to get it through us. So let's look at some stuff that makes us uh, make provision. We're kind of container oriented. You know, like Diet Coke. I love Diet Coke. And I see the Diet Coke. I don't go, I don't go oh man, check out that bottle. That's so neat. No, no, I want what's in the bottle. We're very container conscious. Am I the proper container? Don't worry about the vessel. Worry about what's inside the vessel. Come on, you've got a river of life. John, uh, in John, Jesus said, out of your belly would flow rivers, plural, of living water. Life-giving substance. <laughs> the old song we used to sing, man, I got in this in 1970. We'd sing, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, says chapter 3. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Well, I was preaching in Lamar, Colorado years ago. Lauren was like two. <laughs> this is like 1989. I'm in an in old uh, um, Ace Hardware store in the back preaching. There, you have church wherever, man. It's the last days. And I'm preaching. All of a sudden, Lauren, my daughter, jumps up. She's like two. She starts singing, I got a river of life flowing out of me. I just let her go, man. Keep going, Lauren. That's right. You do. You have a river of life flowing out of you. But see, that's a tributary mentality. Okay? That's a you uh, uh, giving substance and giving supply somewhere else. Not just coming to church all the time, feed me, feed me, feed me, bless me, bless me, bless me. But you get so full that it starts pouring out. The Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because it has no outlet. 
So if you just take in all the time and never have an outlet, uh, that's, a, uh, that's not profitable. So let's go. Let's go. Grab your Bibles. Go to 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to buzz through some stuff here for a little bit, and I'll, I'll get to my greatest hits album right before we close, okay? It'll be, it'll be good. It'll be really good. I'll sing something that's uh, been in the top ten. So here we go. 1 Corinthians 12. You know it as the gifts of the Spirit chapter. And I'm going to skip over everything to get to my points. So he talks about, about 23 to 24, 27 verses about the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, discerning of spirits, working of miracles, special faith. He categorizes three power gifts, three vocal gifts, three revelation gifts. You don't ever see that in the Bible other than your equipment. He's talking here about if you'll, if you'll get up on how the Holy Spirit moves, you're more open to it. And really, the, he, we talked about it today at lunch. Uh, in the military, it's the guys out in the field get, that get to handle all the power. The general signs a piece of paper. It's the guys out in the field. Could you imagine being out in a foxhole? Where's my pen and paper? No, I want a bazooka, man. I want a 50 cal. I want, the most, I, I want a grenade launcher. I, I, want, I want some serious stuff. So it's the guys in the trenches that have, uh, that have the access to all the power. We've taught it incorrectly that we thought, well, a prophet has all the power, apostle has all the power. We thought, well, if we can get Benny Hinn to come do this. Well, Benny Hinn doesn't live here now, but you do. I love Benny Hinn, but he's not here. You are. Everybody goes, well, I wish we had someone come in and start a revival. Start your own revival. Amen. So let's look at this, 1 Corinthians 12. It's all about the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And he finishes off the chapter with, the last verse there, he says, But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Now that word covet there is kind of weird. We were talking about it today. It just means crave. Covet earnestly. That sounds so weird. Covet earnestly the best gifts. I'll show you a better way. No, he's just talking about you start craving the move of the Holy Ghost in some ways like you do with natural things. I talk about Diet Coke. I'm addicted to Diet Coke. I love Diet Coke. Coke. I mean, today they had a couple for me. I cradled it like a baby. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I was telling them I was in the Ukraine, and uh, uh, man, this little house I was in had no heat. It had a little bit of electricity. I found some Diet Cokes. This is almost 30 years ago. I found some Diet Cokes, put them in the fridge, and I was thinking I can make it through Russia as long as I got Diet Coke. And all of a sudden, the power went out, so I took my Diet Coke out of the refrigerator and set it outside on the patio. I came out the next morning. It had frozen and exploded. I wept openly. I cried. I <laughs> I was traumatized. I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. How am I going to handle Russia without Diet Coke? I think I can handle Russia as long as I got Diet Coke. Because, see, I'm addicted. I'm obsessive. I'll go from here and pick up a 32-ounce styrofoam cup filled, and then I'll refill it at the hotel because I like Diet Coke. Now, now, see, don't get too holy with me because you're that way about coffee. You can get around people if they had their coffee. They're growling at you. I mean, you can go, aha, you, you haven't had your coffee, have you? So you've gotten accustomed to it. Your flesh has gotten accustomed to it. My flesh has gotten accustomed to Diet Coke. If my flesh can get accustomed to Diet Coke, my spirit can get accustomed to having the Holy Ghost flow through me to the point that I'm irritable if he's not. Get to the point that you're mad that he hadn't been flowing through you. Wigglesworth would go out on the edge of town. He goes, Lord, you haven't led me to anybody today. And the Lord would go, go over to that chariot right over there. He'd go over there, lead somebody to the Lord because he got accustomed to it. Now, hang with me, hang with me, hang with me. I was preaching in Boston years ago, gosh, like 91, 92. I was preaching at Jonathan Del Turco's church in their Bible school on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. They had me come do gifts of the Spirit. That's what they would have me come do. So you get there Tuesday night, and everybody's tired, man. Everybody's worked all day, and they're exhausted, you know. So you're trying to do school. So I'm spinning plates. I'm juggling. I'm do, 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 doing sock puppets, <laughs> blowing things up and tying them off. I'm, I'm doing, doing whatever I can to keep people with me, you know what I'm saying? So while I'm preaching, the Holy Ghost says there was a woman there that was raped as a child. And it was hindering her marriage right now. I said, Lord, don't tell me that. Let Pastor Del Turco deal with that. I'm just here teaching these classes, you know what I'm saying? So I'm teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, and he told me that. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, I'll get to that, you know. So the class ended, the bell rang, and everybody bolted to get a Diet Coke. And I didn't really get to call that out, which I don't blame them, you know. Uh, so they went to get a Diet Coke, and I still hadn't called that out because I hadn't had a chance to. Came back in second hour, you know, I'm preaching. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Try, trying, to, trying to keep people with me, you know. While I'm preaching, a lady on Pastor Del Turco's staff, watch, she's, she's right over here on the side. She waves her hand at me. She said, are you ever going to allow the Holy Spirit to use you in the gifts of the Spirit in these classes? 
I said, well, as a matter of fact, I had something first hour, but I wasn't quick enough, you know. I said, in fact, there's a lady here, you were, you were raped as a child, and it's hindering your marriage right now. I said, all kinds of people have had horrible things happen to them, but this is specifically hindering your marriage. I said, I don't want you to raise your hand, but I, uh, I, the Lord wants to speak to you. So I, so I began to prophesy about this woman's life never being the same, that the Lord would bless her and restore her and strengthen her. It was so cool. So that's all it was. That was in the middle of my class. So then I went back to preaching. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then I finished the class, you know. And you know how you do when you finish. You kind of come down and stand around like this. Finished preaching the class. And that woman that raised her hand, her and her husband came walking down to Pastor Daryl Turco. And me, we're standing right there. And that lady that raised her hand, she said, I'm the woman that was raped as a child. To the point she told God, I'm not leaving the building until I get set free. To the point she raised her hand. The Lord had already told me before she even raised her hand. But think about that. I'm not leaving the building until I get set free. Now, that was kind of a, a selfish way to look at coveting earnestly the best gift. But what would happen if the entire church thought like that? What would happen if you raised up a group of people that's so adamant about the Holy Spirit, they go, we ain't leaving until the Holy, the Holy Ghost does what He wants to do. Not because we're weird, but we want what heaven wants. It can be that way. Brother Hagin had one church where he could operate like he was supposed to operate. One church out of the thousands he went to. Why? Because people were casual, whatever. Yeah, yeah, nah, whatever. Well, if, you, if you're whatever with God, he'll be whatever with you. I'm not going to be whatever with God. Lord, we hunger for you. We thirst for you. Your plan is to demonstrate the resurrection. And here we have all, all of us ready to operate in this. So let's make some provision. So here he gives you my first point, crave it. Second point, he says, yet I show you a more excellent way. It's good to crave it, but there's something even better. And that's chapter 13, that's love. So there's something about training yourself. And then notice everybody just shouted while I said, Woo, preach it, Brother Joe, it's all over you. Now there's something about love that trains you to tell your flesh to shut up. Someone does you wrong, you respond in the flesh, it doesn't work real well. But you respond from the Spirit. The first record we have of prayer in the New Testament, Jesus said, pray for them that despitefully use you. So anybody can be nice to someone being nice to them, but try being nice to somebody that's being ornery to you. Well, see, that trains your spirit, and the Lord loves that. The voice of love is the voice of the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I just don't know if I can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of love is the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's always going to lead you in love. What would love do? That's what the Holy Spirit would do. He'd be a blessing. He'd be an encourager. He'd be, he, he would help people. Okay, we're just talking about mindsets here, about making provision. What are we doing? We're not necessarily getting in how to get it to you. We're getting in how to get it through you. Do you want to get through you? you got to crave it. you got to be adamant about it. you got to walk in love so much that it freaks people out. All right, my next point. Go to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 2. If you got your Bibles there, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you can't find John, you need help. But anyway, get somebody to help you. Man, we got so many new people coming in that people don't even know where chapters are. That's all right. It's cool. If you came tonight and don't know where stuff is, that's wonderful. Someone will help you. Amen. Go to John chapter 2 and look at the Gospel of John. Very familiar verse, but let's look at something. This is a really cool story here in John 2 verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to them, they have no wine. Jesus goes, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour's not yet come. Like, I'm not even supposed to do this yet. Doesn't this sound like a mother? So the mother goes, his mother says to the servants, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. My third point is obedience. Jesus' mom got him to start having manifestations of the glory of God. The Bible says, now hang with me, this was the beginning of him showing forth his glory. So at some point in your life, you've got to have a start. Here, she did something to get him to start even before he's supposed to start. So there's things you can do to be a catalyst to start operating in things that you think, well, I'm not even supposed to operate in that yet. And here Jesus does the working of miracles. The beginning of him, what? Showing forth his glory. Now hang with me, that word in 1 Corinthians 12, the manifestation of the Spirit's given to every man to profit with all. 
The word manifestation is the word phanerosis. It means a shining forth. Now hang with me. Remember Lucifer? At one point, he was the anointed cherub that covered. He was in charge of worship. He covered the, the mercy seat. He had all those stones and all those uh, uh, jewels on him. So he's covering the mercy seat. So that radiance would come through him. It would manifest all these lights and all this cool stuff because that's what he had all over him. But it wasn't him. It was what was behind him. So when you start manifesting the Holy Ghost, it freaks him out because you're doing originally what he was called to do. He can't stand it when you start radiating the glory of God. Well, here, obedience got Jesus to begin radiating. Now, I remember, hang with me. There's, there's just something about obedience the Lord loves. I was preaching in this church service years ago in Charleston, Illinois. All these big-name preachers were there, and my buddy Ross, I talk about all these stories about Ross, he made me go preach in this camp meeting. I thought, Ross, I don't need to preach in this camp meeting. All these other guys have forgotten more about God than I'll know. So he makes me preach. You know how that goes. So I'm preaching along, finished the service, and Ross came down to hold the microphone for me, kind of like this, while I prayed for people. You know how he'd stand beside me like this, and I'd be laying hands on people like this. Well, I had a word of knowledge that a woman had a growth in her breasts. I called it out. This lady comes walking down, and I knew exactly what it was, a special faith. She comes walking down. This special faith comes on me. says, tell her to go to the restroom and pour water on that growth, and it'll disappear right in front of her eyes. I said, take a lady with you to witness it, and it'll disappear right in front of your eyes. And she looked at me like Brother Hagin talks about a frog in a West Texas hail storm. She, she stormed. She blinked her eyes like she goes, what? I said, go. I said, go. I said, that wasn't my faith. My faith, my faith says, glad you came. Jesus redeemed you. Let's stand on the word. <laughs> Let's stand on the word. Let's receive our healing. Not go pour water on yourself. So I, I scream this at this lady. And Ross is standing there holding the microphone for me like this. And my ears right here, he, he whispered in my ear. He goes, oh, my God. There goes the budget for the meeting right there. <laughs> well, you know, I tell that lady, go. Well, that special faith wears off. And I'm just standing there going, meh, 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 meh. Blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, I just told a lady. To go pour water on herself. How weird is that? She, her name, she's the prayer lady from the church there. Been there many years. Her name's Ramona. She comes walking through the back door, waved her hand. She said, I poured water on that growth and disappeared right in front of my eyes. Now, I don't understand that. Just like Jesus took clay and spit on it, rubbed it on that guy's eyes. I don't really care how the Lord wants to do it. But whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Now, see, we, we suffer from a season of making sure everybody's okay. Did I offend anybody? Is everybody okay? We have to have the mentality, we don't care. I'd rather not offend Jesus. It doesn't mean you have to be a jerk. It just means you've got to do what the Lord wants you to do. You know, for years, my, the Lord would say, you need to call your mom. I'd call my mom. She goes, I just told the Lord to have you call me. It's like, Newman, okay. <laughs> a week later, so, you know. The Lord would go, you need to call your mom. I'd call my mom. She goes, I just told the Lord to have you call me. If I can't obey that, how am I going to obey special faith? He wants a lifestyle of obedience. Don't let the Lord have to tell you 744 times to do something. <laughs> yeah, I know how it goes. Sometimes the Lord's like, he's nudging you, nudging you, nudging you, nudging you. And we're like, okay. But there's constantly something he's dealing with you about that he wants to help you and wants to bless you. Just give in. Go, okay, Lord, I'll do that. And watch the blessing of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. There's something about doing what he tells you to do. It's the deal. All right, real quick, real quick let me give you, we'll give you two more points real quick because I've got to get rocking. I'm preaching too long. All right, uh, my next point, just let me quote this for a minute. John 14, remember he said, In my father's house are many mansions. Was not so, would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. If I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, have I been so long time with you, Philip? Uh, suffice it, he that seen me, seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe me that I'm in my Father, and my Father's in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I'll pray the Father that he'll give you another comfort, and he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, because the world cannot receive it. You see, don't see but you know him. He dwells with you and shall be in you. I can quote John 14. If I got real particular about it, I could quote the whole chapter. But I can't quote John 13. Guess what the Lord did in John 13? He got down and washed their feet. My next point is you have to wash 500 people's feet. No, I'm just kidding. That's, not, that's terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, my next point is a servant's heart. A servant's heart. Live to serve. Live to serve. Live to give your life away. There's something about a servant's heart. I'm talking about making provision. What can you do to make it automatic? Live to serve. 
There's something about serving, just, it just, just the Lord loves it. He said, the greatest among you be a servant of all. How many of you, when you were born, you were pretty sure your parents had you just to be a slave? <laughs> I, I'm, seriously, you know what I'm saying? I, I knew my parents told me over and over again, we didn't plan for you. We didn't want you. You were an accident. I'm like, I get it, okay? I, they just keep going for hours. After the first couple minutes, I got it. But I was certain I was born to be their slave. Specifically, my mother, because she liked a perfect yard, so it was yard work. And then flower beds. She loved perfect flower beds, perfect yards. So I absolutely hated mowing, loathed mowing. I could j- just, ah! So when I got to Raymond in 1980... I traveled a couple summers with Mark Brzee, 78, 79. And so I get to Raymond, 80. I'm 17 years old. I'm a kid. And I don't know how I got in at 17, but anyway, they let me in. And uh, I had this idea while Mark and Janet were over in South Africa. I thought, you know, they're overseas. Why don't I go check on their house? This just came to me. I thought, you know, they're gone. I was uh, uh, not working for them at the time, but I knew Mark because I traveled a couple summers with him. So I wasn't working for him, but I thought, you know, I'm better to go check on his house. I got over to his house. His grass was this high. I thought, oh, my God, get thee behind me, Satan. I, I'm, I thought, what seed did I sow to reap this? How is this happening? So, Because I knew what I had to do. I had to mow the grass. So I thought, the very thing that I absolutely hate, I'm out there. So, you know, you get the grass cut, and then you get the grass off the sidewalk. Mark and Janet come back from South Africa. Oh, wow, this looks so great. Let's do some flower beds. Yeah, let's do flower beds. All right. I'm telling you, I hated every single second I was doing that yard for like four years. Every second. I didn't cuss, but everywhere I spit, the grass caught on fire. I'd just be walking like this. Mm. So so the the thing to get me ready for what I was supposed to do in the ministry was, so did you do a lot of preaching and traveling? No, I mowed grass. See, so, so it wasn't, it's amazing, it wasn't adultery that may keep you out of getting your grace fulfilled. It wasn't murder. It's just, just tell, your flesh telling you, well, why are you doing this? Because there's nothing cool in this. That's when you know you're telling your flesh to shut up. I traveled with this prophet for a while, and uh, the tangible anointing on this guy was so strong. If In the prayer line, I would have to go back and put my hands on the air conditioner in the hotel because my hands would burn so bad. And, and uh, in the prayer line, if I didn't think about sports, I fall out of the power. If you got in neutral, boom, you're on the ground. The presence of God was so tangible. So I had some guys from Bible school come over uh, when I was traveling with that guy. And they said, hey, we want to come over and be around that anointing. Because, I mean, it's tangible. Mark Brzee said it's more tangible than Kenneth Hagin's anointing. I mean, just liquid anointing. So these guys go, we want to come be around that anointing. I said, well, come help me unload the truck. You know how many guys came and helped me unload the truck? Zero. But you know what? Every single time I preach, I can feel a tangible anointing on my body. So see, at some point, we have to live to serve. I'd, 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 I'd ask Pastor Nate, what's the worst job in the church? I want it. What, what can I do? What's the worst? What does, what does someone say? There's no way on God's green earth I'm doing that because that's what I want to do. Because <laughs> there's something about telling your flesh, you're in charge, not your flesh. Yeah. So let's go through these. Number one, crave it. Number two, love. Number three, obedience. After that, a servant's heart. Live to serve. Be thoughtful. That's the number one word for making provision for the gifts of the Spirit. Thoughtfulness. 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 I'm going to make a song out of that right here. Ready? Thoughtfulness. No, I won't do that. Thoughtfulness. You guys are so easy to preach to. You can get crazy. Thoughtfulness. 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 Because we have a tendency to be the Seinfeld generation. I've talked enough about myself. Now you talk about me. Giddy up. Am I in the right room? Come on. All right, my last point. I'm closing right now. It's 8.18. I've preached too long. Last point, last point. You, you guys are so... I got four people. Bring it. All right. I'll come preach to you, man. Here we go. I'm coming down there. Here we go. All right. So my last point is, in Jude, uh, uh, he talks about your prayer life. Because we think our prayer life... <laughs> no, I'm serious. I usually do this. I'll just sit down right here. So... You know, your prayer life is like a train for your future. You know, you're laying down track for your future, right? I mean, well, thanks, buddy. I'm glad to be with you. Uh, I love how sweet you guys are. So your prayer life is track for your future. We know that. Your prayer life is communication with God. 
But what Jude said your prayer life would do, we know it builds you up on your most holy faith. We know what that is. That's an edifice that where you're impervious to attack because you've prayed in tongues so much that you're so strong. And that's true. But the next verse says it keeps you somewhere. It keeps you in the love of God. There's something about walking in love. You go, well, I've heard that all my life, Brother Joe. Well, good for you. Here's a cookie. But you know what? <laughs> it's another thing to actually do it than rather than just hear it. So that's where putting our flesh comes in. Because I don't think of one person here on the way to the service where you're tempted to go shoot somebody. No, you're not tempted to do that. But there's a temptation to go, I don't have time for this. I, I don't have time to do that or this or that. Well, you find out where your priorities are. So let's, I know this is not the most woo-hoo-hoo message and do Elvis Presley, but we're talking about making provision. Learn the def- definitions of the gifts of the Spirit. Look at Wigglesworth. Look at Hagen, how they operated, how, how it wasn't just something they were begging for. It was a byproduct of their life with God. I want to say that again. It was a byproduct of their life with God. You don't have to spend a lot of time with God. None of us have. Everybody's busy. But you can pray in tongues. Well, I pray in tongues in my hotel room. Walk. I'll be walking down the hotel room. And then all of a sudden the maid will see me. And I'm going to say, Namiya, Teo, Tyra, Tyra. I'm like, oh, wow, the maid thinks I'm crazy. Because I'm continually trying to do stuff that's supernatural or affects the part of me that, that hears from God. Then I would, start, I would use my faith. I would start saying, I hearken to the voice of the Lord. Stranger's voice I do not follow. I only do those things that please my Father. I would do things, that I would quote the word that causes us to be a better vessel. And you know what? You'll be a better vessel. Because I'm telling you, God's raising up a group of, I, I said it right there at the beginning of the service, technicians, te- healing technicians. To where you can have people come in from all over and you have a group set up. Oh, oh these people, just like Lake did years ago. People, this one's got cancer, no big deal. This one's got tuberculosis, no big deal. To where there's no intimidation because there's so much dominion in you. So let's make provision. Let's make provision. Let's think ahead. Think ahead for the Lord to use us. Man, I'm excited for you guys. What a wonderful path your church is on. A blending of cool and power and grace and manifestations of the Holy Ghost and a love for Jesus. I can't tell you enough how it blesses the Lord that you come to church on Tuesday night. I can't scream it loud enough. It really, really, really makes him happy. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for these points. We thank you for this season before we depart the earth. We're in awe that we're living just before you are manifested, Jesus. So we take this time to, 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 to school ourselves in, in the spirit of the living God. And so, Father, we yield to you. We yield to you to function with you. I thank you for blessing every person that came tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I had several words come to me before I started. I almost called them out at the beginning. I'll just call them out real quick because I preached a little bit longer than I meant to. Uh, the first one is there's a lady here. You got damage in where you hold a baby. I don't know what the damage is. It's called a word of knowledge, not a paragraph. Where you hold a child, uh, you got some kind of damage there. The Lord is just taking care of it, healing you. This other thing is the inside part of your lip, your, your lower lip right here. You got some kind of damage right there. Now, this is what I used to do just to show you how crazy it is. I was in a meeting with Ray Jean and David Ellis and Ross, and, and the Lord told me, there's someone, listen to this, someone had damage in the back of their throat. And I couldn't remember what it's called. I said, actually, it's that thing that hangs down the back of your throat, and nobody came down. Back then, I would call things out, and I, wouldn't, I would say, I'm not leaving until you come. I just sit down. And so I did that at that church in Mobile, Alabama. I said, there's someone here. You got the damage in the back of your throat. Nobody came down. I waited like this, and the Lord goes, uvula. I didn't even know what that was. I just screamed out, uvula! And Ross and David and Regine just start screaming. They're laughing so hard. Because you know, they automatically think you're crazy. <laughs> this lady came walking down, and, uh, and I even said this. I said, it's almost like it got severed. She said the doctor was putting the scope down her throat, severed her uvula, and she got healed. I mean, God's just so cool. I, I'll give you one more, and then I tell these stories just because I want you to see how wild God is. Oh, in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, I walked up to this lady. And the Lord said she had damage in her hip. I said, well, you got damage in your hip. She goes, no, I don't. I said, well, you know, I could miss it by a mile. I'm so flawed. Hello. I said, but you know what? I really see this damage in your hip. She goes, no, 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 no. All of a sudden, I had a vision. I saw this tube go into her hip. I said, wait a minute. I see this tube go into her hip. She goes, no, 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 no. I said, okay, I'm sorry. I missed it. I said, but I'm going to pray for you anyway. Because <laughs> see, it's a word of knowledge, not a word of wondering. Okay. 
So I prayed for her anyway, and uh, the pastor tells me after the service, she goes, you aren't going to believe this. She said, the, the associate that picked you up from the, the airport didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. That woman had sat in her office. She had cancer in her hip socket. The doctor had put this scope in her hip and made it, it flared up and got even worse. The woman got healed of cancer, asking me not to pray for her. The pastor invited me back to do a New Year's Eve service, advertised that woman healed of cancer, rejecting prayer. That's how cool he is. He's just absolutely over the top, radical. Man, oh man, oh man. Let's thank him, then we'll go. Lord, we thank you. There was a couple other words that got to come back to me. Come on, what was that, Lord? Tell me that again. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. We bless you, we bless you. We bless you, Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you glory, give you honor and praise. We take this moment on Tuesday night to magnify your kindness, magnify your goodness. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We lift you up. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We lift you up. This other thing is your uh, uh, collarbone uh, right here between your shoulder and your neck right there. Someone's got damage right there. You're being restored. Just take it. Just go, man, I'll take that. It's a freebie. Amen. Praise God. There was something else he's told me right before the service, and it'll come back to me. Let's just wait just a moment. They'll come back. Lord, what was that? What was that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. (laughs) Amen. Your mercy endures forever, Lord. We're amazed at your kindness, Lord. How kind you are and how good you are. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Just tell him one more time how much you love him. It's okay. We're, it's 826. We'll go in just a minute. We'll, just tell him, say, Lord, I love you. I honor you. I bless you. I magnify you. I give you glory and give you honor and give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. I know one thing. I'll say this, and then we'll, I'll, I'll wait for that word. I know even Pastor Nate and Pastor Evan and the staff, uh, with, with a, I don't even know what you call it, but like with a decision or a consecration of recent time, whatever that consecration was, it, it will affect everybody on the staff. It'll almost be like an increase of anointing without even trying. It's like a blanket that comes with that, whatever that decision that you made. Whatever it was, the Lord's like, watch this. Boom, 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 boom. Deposits of the glory of God. Now, that, let, let's don't get jealous because the, the, the staff gets it. Let's, let's take it. Uh, yeah, go, oh, man, I'm in the same line. I'm right behind you. Come on. So whatever decision you made, God's making me stop at the end of the service right now to tell you, just enjoy it. I mean, sometimes it brings revelation. Sometimes it brings boldness. Sometimes it brings a wildness. Sometimes it just brings strength. And sometimes it just brings a knowing. See, that's an increase in that anointing. You, you can tell when it's there. It's just like, wow, something's on. It's a mantle. So it's cool how, how a direction you can take will enhance that. So whatever you did or whatever consecration or whatever decision it was, I mean, obviously it'll bless you, but, man, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a down-the-line deal. Boom, it's like a stamp. Amen. Father, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen. Oh, I heard. I know what the other one was, your bone marrow. Man, why does it take me that long to get back to that? Because uh, uh, I finally relaxed because I thought I got the last thing out. Uh, your uh, damage in your bone marrow. Uh, it, it, does, it affects your red, bl- your red blood cells, your white blood cells. Someone's healed. Someone you had some kind of weird damage. You're healed. You're healed. Amen. Amen. Devil's a liar. Pants on fire. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And still another person with nosebleeds. I had that last night. Came back to me again. Nosebleeds. You won't have them anymore. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm so uh, blessed to get to be with you. You guys are so hungry. It's fun to be in church on Tuesday night. I wish I could articulate how wonderful the days ahead will be all the way up to the rapture of the church. It's hard to even express it in English because it's a spiritual thing. It's just great increase. He's going to enhance his relationship with you even more to where you'll just know things about him that you, how do I know that? He'll just enlighten himself to you. Because it's just how you, you find out more about him the closer you get to him. So enjoy that, man. Enjoy it. It'd be wonderful. And I, I'm excited for whatever you guys have to do. If it's a helicopter pad or a runway or, uh, or if it's a bat pole or I don't know, whatever. whatever. <laughs> if pastor needs to wear a cape, I think I'd be all for that. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Lord, we love you, we honor you, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody here not baptized in the Holy Spirit like to be filled before we leave tonight? Maybe you're here. Pastor Nate will close and we'll, we'll have you come forward and we'll pray with you. You've never spoken tongues before. Man, don't put it off. Get it. Jesus said you'll be endued with power, not weirdness. Power. Amen. Amen, amen. Anyone at all, real quick, you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, just lift your hand up real high. Amen. Good for you. Good for you. That's wonderful, ma'am. Wonderful. Who else wants to join that lady? Good for you, buddy. Awesome. There you go. Good, good, good. Who else wants to join those two to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. 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 Good for you, buddy. Cool. That's awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. Good for you. Who else wants to join those three that have raised their hands? It won't take but a second. We'll do it here at the end, and uh, you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Your life will change forever. Endowment with power from on high. Thank you, Jesus. Who else wants to join those three? Anyone else? Anyone else? I know there's more. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's just it's easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Baptize in the Holy Ghost. The righteousness of God made manifest and made known through the believer in the last days that Jesus would be exalted in every measure and every way. That's what the baptism of the Holy Ghost will do for you. That's what the Holy Spirit just said to me talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Anybody else? Anybody want to join those three? I'll do it like an auctioneer. 5, 5, 25, 35, 45. Here we go. Anybody, anybody else want to do it? All right. Okay. I'm trying to close. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking the time. Super excited for you. I know I said that, but I really am. Really, really neat things ahead. Amen. Thank you for being so attentive and so hungry. Look forward to seeing you again. Pastor Nate, what a treat to be with you. I was blessed. I was so fresh, refreshed and blessed. Thank you guys for being so normal. Amen. Amen. Normal is cool. Amen. Give Pastor Nate a big hand as he comes. Amen. Bless you, Pastor Nate. Thank you. So good. So good. Um, I guess you could chew on that a few more times. Um, obviously, that will be on our website, um, beyondchurch.org, and you can chew on that a little bit. Uh, there's, no, there's no pressure. Walking with the Lord. It's not a strive, it's a rest. And um, I'm going to reiterate one of the things he said today. <clears throat> um, we got to do lunch together, or breakfast, lunch, kind of whatever, just kind of talking, and the staff was over, and, um, and, and you said something. Uh, we were just talking about how, recognizing the voice of the Lord. <clears throat> and um, here you got Brother Joe, you know, he's talking about serving this prophet and being with Brother Hagen and just these different people that that mind. In other words, they they found like the Lord these revelations. They were theirs. They owned them because they found them. How many of you know it's? You can look some things up on uh, Google and find your healing by just typing in healing scriptures. But there's a whole other thing for you to be reading the Word on your own and you've dug it out and you've mined it. And so this is this generation. Um, that he, you know, hung around. And anyway, he said something that the same thing that um, Brother Mark Hankins um, uh, said to me, and we were just talking about uh, having a teacher, having somebody teach you how to how to walk in the Spirit, just like a father would teach you to change the oil on your car. And so I just was like, hey, so t t let's talk about changing the oil spiritually or like is concerning the things of the Spirit or just walking with the Lord in general, you know, and recognizing His voice and, and things like that. And, and he said, well, you know, and I'm going to just quote what you said. He said, I, I pray, pray in the Spirit. And, and, uh, and, you know, sometimes you'll be praying in the Spirit when you're not praying out loud, but you'll just catch yourself. And I don't know, maybe you're not, you, you don't do this, but where your Spirit's praying. So you're not necessarily, but just like underneath, inside, like just right in here, you can just see, no, you know there's an unction. And so you hear yourself doing it. And you could give voice to it real quick. It's the same thing. Um, and he just said it's, it's like that. It's like you, you learn to recognize when that's talking. It's like it's, you know, like, and, and it would be like the Lord would impress you. And it's like almost like that same voice, but you just recognize it right there. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, just talking about praying in the Spirit and how you recognize the voice of your Spirit or the voice of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. He lives in us. 
Glory to God. He lives in us. And, and that's the guide. It's right here so that I can be led for everything. You know, every decision, every yes, no, this one, that one. I can be led and, and it be so natural, right? And there's a lot of things the Lord will, the, uh, he allows you to. What, what, what color do you like? But there's some things that the Lord wants uh, for your plan and, and the plan and the path that he has for you, Lord. The eyes of my understanding be enlightened that I know the hope to which I've been called. And so I'm saying this because I want to get to this next thing. Um, and, and, and Pastor Mark Hankins, both these men um, served. <laughs> I think this is really interesting. They both served um, and, and still serve um, uh, that office and, and still come into Winter Bible and still come into camp meeting um, and serving the Son. How many of you know? Uh, it's, it's one thing to serve like this, a great prophet. It's another thing to serve the Son of the prophet that you might not say that this or that or the other thing. How many of you know there's, there's significance in that? And Brother Mark is the same way. Anyway, so um, a couple years ago, about two years ago, I, uh, we went down to, to be at a, a small conference that we got invited to. And we're like, wow, glory to God. That's so cool. Um, and as we were leaving, it was just felt we just felt so honored to be able to come with these other 30 pastors. Like, how did we even get invited? And on our way back, we were driving the windy roads. And I just felt so impressed in my heart to to ask him if he would be a spiritual father to me. And I was like, are you going to ask him to do that really? Are you really? And it's like, but I couldn't get away from it. And so finally, you know, just like he said, that impression, impression. And so I asked him, hey, you, you know, I messaged him on Facebook and gave, you know, and he said, yeah, I, I want your number. And then he called me and he said, hey, he said, absolutely. That's an honor. That'd be an honor. And he said, I want to come to your church. And so when he came, I say all this story, because sometimes stories are good to, to kind of put in perspective why. Um, I got to pick him up. A, a lot of times I, I, I don't do that. I, I just kind of hang around here. And, but I, I was like, I'm picking him up because I asked him if he'd be like a spiritual father. I need some, some understanding because I haven't got to change the oil on a lot of these things. I mean, I'm a young man. In, in the things of the Lord, and, and I haven't seen, and, and, and yet, like Brother Hagin talked about for the last seven to ten years of his ministry, talking about, you know, go, move, moving back to the things of the Spirit, because things got so weird that, that the pendulum swung the other way, right, in churches because of uh, all these kind of things, and he said, no, you need to get back to that, right? Well, not, not, not having really walked with, with that, or having any understanding, or hand-in-hand, Turning the wrench, if you will. Um, I got to drive with him to church, and I said, so tell me something. And uh, he said, tell you what? Well, tell me something I need to know for ministry. And uh, he said two things. He said, okay. and he just sat quiet for a little bit, and we're driving. You know, I'm like, okay, maybe I put him on the spot. You know, you know, like you know, you kind of go, okay. Sometimes you've heard people say, well, ministers, they don't like to be talked to or whatever. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, but I mean, anyway, so I'm thinking maybe. So he's kind of just quiet, but he's just a, you know a really nice guy, and he's like just quiet for a little bit. And he said two things, and he said, say this, say I receive the anointing before you minister. In other words, that you'd be equipped, right? I receive the anointing. Just say that. Just say that when you're out the day. Not even just, not even just before you minister, just com- as, as, to be a father. I receive the anointing. In other words, there's a, a grace. There's a king, like he was talking about tonight, an anointing, a kingdom anointing to, uh, to the way that it would be in, in, as, as in heaven here on this earth. Receive the anointing. And then he said this, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. He said, Pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, and he said, pray in the Spirit an hour a day. He said, just if you just, that's be a great place to start. He said, most people, most people won't do it, but if you'll pray in the Spirit an hour a day, you will be so keen in recognizing his voice. And the thing about it is, is what's so wonderful is all the things in your heart that you maybe have caught a glimpse of, but you don't know how to get there, quote unquote, the cool thing about that is, is we have a guide. And so as long as I have a guide, the Holy Spirit, you know, he's our guide, right? He leads and guides us. This is John 14 and John 16. But, but I don't have to know how to get there. 
I don't have to strive to arrive. That would, you could write that down. I don't have to do any of that. You know why? Because I got a guide. I got a guide. And so the steps of the righteous men are ordered to the Lord. That steps of the righteous women are ordered to the Lord. Your steps are ordered to the Lord. And so let's put the word of God in our, in our mouth. This is a promise to me. It's a promise to you. That my steps are ordered of you. And I know the hope to which I've been called. And I know my Father's voice and the strangers I, I will not follow. That's one of the things. If we could do anything else, I'll tell you before you go tonight, put the right words in your mouth. Don't say any more. Because you can write, write your own ticket. Don't say any more. I don't know how to hear God's voice. Because you do. You've been listening in the wrong place right here. You listen here. You listen to, and this is where even just tonight, we're not going to, we're not letting your three of you that want to get filled with the Spirit, we're not forgetting about that. We're about to dismiss. And you, and, you know, the other ones that are in here, you say, I know I need to be filled with the Spirit. And let me tell you, you do. I can tell you, when I got filled with the Spirit, my life changed forever. Burned alive in 95. I got a rock, and I painted it, pulled it out of the lake at this, at this camp. And all my, ki- my friends, I mean, I was a kid that wanted to go do crazy things and have fun at camp and, lo- you know, stay up late and get in trouble, maybe a little, just enough. Friends come into the cabin, hey, Nate, Nate, where are you, what, what are you doing, what are you doing? And I'm up in the top of my bunk, laying there. Just crying before the Lord, just just so intimate would be the best way I could say it. Changed my life forever. I know I, I knew my father in a way I didn't know him before. And um, and it, that was the one prerequisite that he said for you to be a witness. Wait. And receive the Spirit upon you, not just within you, upon you. And you will receive power to be a witness. And so that's one of the things, bring it, got to bring back. Bring back. Just talk about the Spirit of God. Talk about the fact that He lives in me. Talk about the fact that all of this. And so we're going to dismiss. Um, and, but, and as we do just tonight, and, and you go, and we're not having service tomorrow night, so enjoy your, maybe, maybe a snow ice day, whatever it might be. Um, I know my kids are like, oh, please, God, cancel school. <laughs> you should ask for a word of wisdom for that, a word of knowledge or something. But, um, <laughs> but I'll tell you, the, the, the genuine wisdom, by wisdom, a house is built. By wisdom, more precious than rubies, more precious than gold or silver, fine silver. Wisdom. You can look off. I'm telling you, you got to hear a lot of wisdom speak um, this week. What an honor to have them. Um, I <laughs> Never mentioned one time uh, the book table audio, um, just there's teaching all back in there. I'm telling you, it'd be the best investment you could ever make. Um, uh, and so I just wanted to re- remind you of that. Go take a look and just let your let the Lord, you know, lead you. If it's like, yeah, you need to get that one, then do it. Because the Lord doesn't ever cause you to make a bad investment. So with that... Um, if you need to be filled with the Spirit, we want to invite you forward as we, as we close tonight. Other than that, we love you guys so much. Grab the kiddos and, and, and drive safe, and we'll see you guys Sunday morning. God bless you.